Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The horrific afterlife of the medieval queen buried in three places. She was the Queen of England, and was married to one of England's greatest warrior kings, but Eleanor of Castile was in her death subjected to a harrowing and shocking ordeal in which parts of the Queen were buried in many different places. Eleanor was known to have been close with her husband, Edward I, and she would be with him during some of his continental campaigns. But short of her 50th birthday, Eleanor was taken ill, and she died in the November of 1290, and her husband was distraught. He organised a huge funeral for her, and still today, markers regarding her final journey to London stand across the nation. But what is the story of the horrific afterlife of Eleanor of Castile? Eleanor of Castile was a better educated woman than most of the medieval queens, and she was a fan of literature, and encouraged the use of different decorative styles in the royal castles. She was a successful businesswoman, but she was the daughter of the King of Castile, and shortly before her 13th birthday, she met her husband, Prince Edward of England, the future Edward I. The couple's parents arranged a marriage as part of an alliance between Castile and England, and they believed this was a positive thing as France was seen as a threat by the pair. But following their marriage, the pair would have a deep affection in their marriage, and Eleanor gave birth to around 16 children over around 30 years, including the heir to the throne, Edward II. The royal couple would practice the art of kingship and queenship, and they would manage England's French province, but in the 1260s, the couple were involved in a civil war and were even imprisoned by baronial leader Simon de Montfort. But Eleanor would go with her husband on a crusade during which Edward I was wounded by an assassin who tried to kill him using a poisoned dagger. It was alleged that Eleanor then saved Edward by sucking the poison out of his arm. But following the death of Henry III... Edward and Eleanor were crowned in Westminster Abbey in the August of 1274. They would tour the kingdom and would visit different areas for hunting trips, but Eleanor would build up her own property portfolio and she would finance her lifestyle with this. She would go with Edward on his conquests, and of course he was regarded as the Hammer of the Scots and would conquest much of Wales, building English castles there. Eleanor was a healthy woman through much of her life, surviving a huge number of pregnancies, and she was not a frail lady. But after the birth of her last child, Edward's household would then begin to purchase medicines for the Queen's use, and records of this exist. It's not known for certain what illness was causing her problems, but one report from a member of the royal entourage stated that she had a double quartan fever. This meant that she was most probably suffering from a strain of malaria but this disease was not fatal itself, but instead leaves its victims weak and vulnerable to other infections. The liver and the spleen of the Queen may have become fragile, and she may have also inherited the cardiac issues of the Castilian royal family. But there were signs that Eleanor was gravely ill. Arrangements at the time were made for the marriage of two of her daughters in haste, and a summer tour in 1290 processed at a slower pace due to her health. They stopped in Clipston and Parliament was gathered and her children came to visit her. But after the end of this short Parliament, the King and Queen went to Lincoln and by this point Eleanor was only able to travel a short distance each day. The final stop for her was the village of Harry and the journey at this point was abandoned as the Queen was too ill. She stayed in a house of a man named Richard de Weston, and whilst here she received the last rites from a priest. On the evening, on the 28th of November 1290, Eleanor of Castile died, and her husband was at her bedside. But this was not the end of her story. Eleanor was then embalmed, and during this process, a physician made a deep cut into her stomach and removed her intestines, heart and other different organs. Then this cavity was stuffed with herbs and spices to stave off decay, and following the embalming process, a procession was then organised to take the Queen back to Westminster Abbey, where she could be buried. But the 13th century embalming methods and complete removal of internal organs, including the heart, was not unusual. This happened to a lot, especially to those of significant stature in society, 
but what made Eleanor's embalming and subsequent burial rather strange was that she was subjected to a triple burial. This meant that her body was buried in one place, her internal organs were buried in another, and her heart was then buried separate also. But the locations of these are very interesting. The internal organs, such as the intestines and kidneys of Eleanor of Castile, were buried inside of Lincoln Cathedral, and here Edward placed a duplicate of her Westminster tomb. The entrails of the Queen were placed inside a vessel and tomb in the cathedral many miles away from the rest of her, but the Queen's heart was then buried in London, as would her body be, but these were not buried together. The Queen's heart was buried in a Dominican priory at Blackfriars in London, with the heart of her son, Alfonso. There are accounts that from time there was a monument constructed to commemorate the burial of her heart there, and there was a wall painting and angelic statues in the metal standing under a stone canopy documenting the burial of her heart, but this was destroyed during the dissolution of the monasteries. The Queen's funeral was to take place in Westminster Abbey, and this was where her body would be buried, and where today it still lays to rest. On the journey from Harby to London, each stop that the procession made was marked by what became known as an Eleanor Cross, which documented the importance of the journey. Only three of these survived today, but there were many of these made. Her funeral occurred on the 17th of December 1290, and her body was placed into a grave near to the high altar that originally contained the coffin of Edward the Confessor. Also, it contained the remains of King Henry III until his remains were moved to a new tomb, but Eleanor's body was placed in this important tomb until her own was finished, and she ordered this shortly before her death. It shows the Queen in marble, with carved mouldings and shields of her coats of arms. Eleanor of Castile had a bizarre burial, in the fact that she was buried in three different places. Her entrails and organs were buried in Lincoln, her heart was buried in Blackfriars, and the priory there, but her body and still is inside a tomb in of Westminster Abbey. She is considered a significant medieval English queen, as she was a good consort for her husband, and she was a very respected woman. Yet her afterlife is one of the strangest and most shocking. The location of her heart still today remains debated. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.